Hey there, today we are going to be talking about four ways to use filters in your Looker Studio reporting to make everything that you thought possible actually possible. Uh, that we're gonna talk about this using GA4 specifically, but this can apply to any data source you have under the sun. So without further ado, let's hop into it. Okay, before we start anything, let's get, get super familiar with what we are trying to do here. So here is a chart that I've got. Um, down here is the filter. So in the, in the setup tab at the very bottom is where the table filter is. Um, the first point I want to kind of bring up is that when you're using filters, you have three ways to access them. Way one is down here on the page, like on the actual chart filter. So if I add another chart next to it, right, and I click on this chart, that chart will not have the filter. The second thing is that if you go up to resources and manage filters, you can create filters here as well. So you can select your different data sources, name it here and create that filter as well as see all the filters. The third thing I wanted to show you is that if you come over here to page, right, and you go to current page settings, what you can also do is add your data source and then add a filter to the entire data source, okay? So now if I click on this table again, you will see that we have a page filter that is applied at the page level and a table filter that is applied at the table level, okay? And so that way we have kind of the three ways to access this. There is another way that is helpful when kind of building out reports, um, when you might want to have interactions on the page, and that is this quick filter up here. It is not the same thing as a filter though. So here we can add a filter of say, hey, I wanna see only where the city is um, Zion, right? And what will happen is, is that this report, right, will have where the city is Zion. Once you go to view mode, though, that will disappear. It's really just meant for when you're um, actually building out reporting, uh, like for you can try things out before you uh, actually ship them, right? So again, that wouldn't work. So we don't want to do that. So right there, we've got the 3.5 ways of applying filters, the page, the uh, actual chart, and then in the actual resources up here. The other way right up here is not a filter. It's technically the same thing as a control. Hope that made some sense. But before I keep going and show you the third or second, third and fourth uh, different feature parts. I want to make sure you have the opportunity of downloading the Looker Studio cheat sheet, the dashboard cheat sheet that gives you eight optimization points. Head over here to uh, visionlabs.com forward slash YouTube. Grab yourself a copy of this cheat sheet um, in visionlabs.com slash YouTube. You can grab that. Um, it's again, Eight, eight optimization points, you can get it. Also, I send out a newsletter every single Thursday at 7 a.m. So you can join that as well. All right, let's talk about now layering filters, right? So thing number two is layering filters. Let me show you what I mean by that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into this. We are going to first remove that page level filters. So just because that will get confusing very quickly. And let's hop into this. So the next thing is, is that when you say include something, so I create a page level filter, um, let's say, or sorry, a chart level filter. Let me just start from the beginning is let's add a filter and we hit create new filter, you will get this dialog box. You can name this filter and then you have these options, include, exclude, right? That's pretty standard. And then you have the dimension you can filter on or metric you can filter on. Usually I'd say 99% of the time you're gonna be filtering on dimensions, not metrics. So say I wanted to include only people, right? Um, only pages, right? Page paths that contain Google. So this will include page path that contains Google. Ta-da, we've made our first thing. You will notice that I did not include um, the name of this report. It is page path filter. The th next thing I wanna talk about is naming your filters. This is the thing that we do at Vision Labs is you name them very, very straightforward so other team members can know what you're doing. So it starts with I hyphen, so I is for include, hyphen is page, page path, hyphen C for contains, Google. Now, when you're looking at all of your filters right here, you know exactly what it's gonna do, okay? So that's the next tip there. Now, we're gonna have another amazing thing is how filters are actually applied. You might be saying to yourself, hey, JJ, uh, this, we don't have page path here. 
And that's the beauty of filters is you can filter it on something that does not exist in your current data set. So say, for example, I wanted to add a chart here, right? And I wanted to say, I want to see how many page views. Sorry, they're just called views. So I want to see how many views. All right, we've generated 651,000 views. I can then add a filter, right? So any page that contains Google, I have only received 2,653 um, views to any page path that contains Google. That can be extremely confusing because you don't have that. And if you don't, if you don't rename this to say Google page views, right? And you're not going to know what's happening. So keep that in mind is that when you're making a, when you're adding a filter is that you have to note that on the page, because there's no way for somebody at the end, if you're just in view mode to know, Hey, how did I do this? Right? There we go. The next tip I want to talk about with filters is stacking filters. So what you can do is you can say, Hey, I'm event name and I'm going to have, uh, scrolls, right? So we have scrolls, this event name. So here we are looking at currently views, but say I want to change this to sessions, right? This, and say I wanted to have every session to have two criteria met. One, they encountered a page that had Google and two, they triggered a scroll event. Well, you can actually layer in um, filters together. So here page path contains Google. And now we are going to create another one that includes the event name that is equal to scroll. All right. Remember the naming things, event name that is equal to scroll. All right. We have right now, you can see here that we've had this is the page path that contains Google and contains scroll. If I apply those same ones to here, so let's just get rid of this. We have page path there, and then we have the scroll. You will see here that the event count is 71, but if we have sessions, it should match up to this. Why does it not match up? I still have this page title. There we go. So ta-da. So now you can see how these can start being stacked together. The next problem you're going to encounter here is if you do something that is mutually exclusive. So say, for example, I say well, I have the event name, right, that I want is equal to page underscore view. Again, remember your naming conventions, I event name equals to page underscore view. And if you hit save on that, you're going to get no data and you're very confused because these are stacked together and you now have a problem. Okay. So keep that in mind is that if you do this, you can then have a problem where you have multiple things together. I'm going to get rid of this page view one. We're going to go back to business. Okay. So now that you've had these filters, the next thing I want to talk about is when you are blending data together. So let's talk through how we would do that. So let's just say I've got the event name of scroll and then I'm going to say percent, I think percent scrolled is right here and it's 90%. We don't care about that. So 90% scroll. And then we want to have the page path as well. Okay. So right now we've got all of the page paths that contain Google, right? And have hit a 90% scroll. That's what we're looking at right here. So let's just say, for example, I wanted to make a little funnel, right? I wanted to say, hey, people who viewed this, how many sessions viewed this page? And then how many people from that continued onwards? Let's just go and try it out. If I remove these then here, bit bitty bop bitty boo, and I select this page and I hold shift and click this one, I right click and hit blend data. We now have a new data source. Okay. That is a blended data source. And what I want to show you here is that when we edit this blended data source, we now have um, a left join. So left outer join, and it has all of these different types of joins here. I don't care about all these joins. I want to just have it joined on page path. So I'm going to keep page path the same. So now we've got the number of sessions, right? That I view this page path. We don't care about percent scrolled or even event name. 
the number of sessions that viewed this page path. We can get rid of this too. We then also over here have the event name and the percent scrolled and page path. But these filters down here contain Google and scroll are going to then apply them here. So what this is gonna show us is the number of sessions that hit this page and the number of sessions who'd hit 90% on that page. I'm gonna get rid of this Google just for the sake of simplicity and get rid of this and get rid of this and this. So now we just have page path that contains has hit 90 and we have page path with sessions that did not hit 90 and they're joined together. So let's hit save. I'm gonna rename this really quickly to uh, 90 percent sessions. So we have 90% sessions on this page. And then we have sessions on this page. I'm going to hit save and rename my data source here of, uh, let's just call this scroll by page. Okay. So now we have a filter applied to a subset of our blend. We have no filter on the other side. And let's just build out a little tiny funnel here, folks. We've got page path, and then we'll have sessions, and then we will have 90% sessions. So now what you'll see is that here are all, like the percentage of people who hit 90%. Let's create a filter or create a field here of sum of 90% sessions divided by the sum of sessions. Now we'll have our 90 percent scroll percentage. And we will change this number to be a percentage, a number to percent. And then we'll hit apply. And so now right at the top of the hour is we've got these things right here. So we've got um, a filter applying to one of our data sources in this blend. We then have uh, another data source that has nothing attached. We built those from down here. We can then add another filter that we will get added to here. So let's just say we wanted to exclude all the not sets just because our stakeholders were saying, hey, um, we don't want to have those. So exclude where the page path is equal to parentheses not set parentheses. Exclude page path equal to not set. All right. And right now we've then created a little funnel. We are using multiple levels of filters, right? We've got filters here, we've got filters there, and everything is in place right now. So using filters, you can customize reports to say, hey, I now have a filter that's applying to an event that does not exist um, on this page. We have percentage scrolled as a uh, dimension, and you now know how this report works. So that's the beauty of filters, is you can really, really hone in, create something that makes sense, have even like a little baby filter here of the percentage of people, and then add another filter to clean that data up, right? So we've got filters on filters. We can then scroll and see here, what's the lowest number ones here. We could add another filter to exclude nulls, all right? And so what I'm gonna do here is if you made it this far in the video, I'm gonna show you one last trick of if we add a control that is a checkbox, all right? And what I'm gonna do is use that say scroll by page, which is the same data source here. And I wanna say, where like create a field where 90 90 percent thing equals null and this will say oops i think is null oh boy should not have tried this there we go non 90 percent viewed pages. And if I hit apply, what will happen is that this will then show us, if I go to view mode, we now have a using a filter to show every page here is null. And if I do the inverse now, well, it should work, but it's not working. Guys, that's why you don't go off script. Okay. So if you're still watching, I apologize is not Null. There we go. Let's see. Here we go. This is for all money and glory. 
if we select this, we should now see every page excluding nulls. So if I sort this, everything will be 100% and we should not see nulls. So there you go. Little pro tip at the end here. If you have any questions, there's an article on this entire topic linked down below. I will see you guys in the next video.